Hi, and welcome to Horror Recapped. Today we're going to explore 2004's Cube Zero. Beware, spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. We open up to the point of view of someone coming through an opening in a cube. After they climb down to the floor, we see that they only have one boot left, and he seems to be having trouble breathing. As he looks around the cube, he picks the hatch that is in the floor as the one he's going to try next. It leads to another cube, and the door closes as he checks some of the other options. Eventually, he chooses one of the hatches in the wall, and he climbs yet into another cube. Only, this one has a trap inside that sprays him with some sort of liquid that causes him to scratch his skin away. As the skin wipes from his body, he eventually melts away before his skeleton falls to the ground in a pile of bodily fluids and we see that someone is watching this happen on a computer screen. The monitor shows that the subject has been terminated, and two men watch on as the recording plays. Here, we meet Eric, who saves the footage on a DVD and labels it with the victim's name. On the other side of the desk, Dodd plays chess with Eric. Dodd sees that Eric is looking through the subject's file. Eric reluctantly puts the file down, and goes back to his sketch of the man whom just passed away. Eventually, Eric looks to the empty desk beside him, and he asks Dodd when the missing worker will be coming back. Dodd casually mentions that they'll probably be back next week, but he goes back to focusing on the game that Eric is definitely winning. Then, Eric puts Dodd in a checkmate, and he goes elsewhere in the room. Eric can't help questioning things, and Dodd continues to try and come up with another excuse of an answer. When a loud rumbling is heard on the other side of the room, they hurry over to an elevator door that opens to reveal two pills that Dodd calls lunch. After saying grace, they swallow the pills, and Dodd notices a note on the tray that gives them a job to do. They quickly go back to their equipment to record a specific victim that is trapped in the cube. The victim's name is Reigns, and Eric seems to get distracted when he sees her. After pulling himself back to reality, they extend a robotic arm into the cube that scans her dream. They see that she's dreaming of a doctor implanting something inside of her, and she sees her daughter going through the same thing. Then her dream shifts to an outing in the woods with her daughter, but it's quickly interrupted when masked men kidnap them. From her dream, Eric and Dot can see that she actually unmasked one of the men that kidnapped them, and they compile the data onto a disc. As they wait for it to be done, Eric tries to ask Dodd when the last time he remembers going outside was, but Dodd can't remember. Neither can Eric. The more Eric thinks, Dodd grabs a picture of the missing co-worker's kids, and he tells Eric that they are orphans now because the man thought too much. After this, Dodd decides to clock out for the day, and he heads to his room while Eric monitors Reigns some more. In the cube, Reigns wakes up and she scans her surroundings to figure out where she is. She notices that she has a tattoo of a barcode on her hand, and she calls out to her captors. She tries to ask what they did to her daughter, but then she realizes that she can't even remember her daughter's name. After she doesn't get an answer, she checks one of the hatches in the wall, and she sees that it leads to another cube. Once she gets in the other cube, she finds a man sleeping on the floor. As she climbs in, she gets grabbed by Haskell, who is waiting for her to come in. Suddenly, she meets the other people that are in the room with them, and she realizes that they are all in the same boat. She asks about her daughter, but no one has seen her. Haskell tries to warn her about moving around the cubes with caution, and we see that Mayerhold has already lost some fingers to a trap. We also meet Bartok and Jellico, but no one seems to remember anything about themselves other than Reigns. They agree to continue looking for a way out, and they explain that they used the boot throwing technique to determine if the cubes are safe. As they push forward, Bartok finds himself in a cube where the trap activates after he wanders in. He soon finds himself severed into pieces by a rope, and Reigns catches sight of him as it happens. Back in Eric's office, he sketches Reigns on his pad, and he asks Dodd if he recognizes her because he faintly remembers her. Dodd warns him one last time to stop digging into things, and Eric decides that he'll only ask one more question. He asks about a third exit that leads straight outside. Dodd tries to say that it doesn't exist, but Eric doesn't buy it. Eventually, Eric asks Dodd if he ever feels guilty, but Dodd takes offense to this line of questioning. Back in the cube, the captives figure out that letters they've found line up with coordinates for the cube's position, and they use this as they continue searching for the edge of the cubes. Meanwhile, Eric searches through Rain's file and finds that there's no consent form for her. Eric decides that this is illegal, and he believes that she is actually innocent. As he goes to call the higher-ups, the phone rings 
When he answers, it turns out to be for Dodd. It turns out that someone is at their exit, and Dodd has Eric help with the procedure to handle it. It turns out that it's Owen. After they go over a series of questions over the intercom, his answers result in them incinerating him. After seeing what happens when someone reaches the exit, Eric isn't too sure he wants Reigns to make it anymore. Dodd gives Eric a note to send up the elevator, but after thinking about what just happened, Eric decides to ride the elevator down. Once the elevator comes to a stop, the door opens to reveal a cube hatch, and Eric makes his way into the cube. Before the hatch closes behind him, he sees that the elevator goes back up. He's trapped inside now. Soon, some men show up to help Dodd. He meets Jax, and they get to work immediately. As they run through all the possibilities of the cube to find Eric, they give Dodd an experiment to do on Rain's group from Eric's computer. Back in the cube, Rain's group makes their way through the cubes, but they end up getting separated from Jellico. Once Jellico is alone, Dodd conducts a test that involves needles on the floor. She loses consciousness. Eric, on the other hand, is running through all the possibilities to figure out where Rain's and the survivors are. Reigns and her group eventually find the cube that Jellico is in, but when they go to wake her up, it turns out that she is burning from the inside out. When she tries to grab onto Mayor Hold, he pushes her off, and she dies from hitting her head on the wall. It turns out that she scratched him during the altercation, and soon, the same thing starts to happen to him. Eventually, Haskell drops Marihold into a cube that releases antennas that make him explode from the sound waves they produce. As Haskell and Reigns discuss whether that was necessary, Haskell pops up and explains everything that he knows. Back in the office, Dodd tells Jax that Eric has crossed paths with the subjects, and they now know where everyone is. Eric tries to convince Haskell and Reigns that he can help them get out, but when he starts to explain that there is a rumored third exit, he also tells them that he doesn't know how to find it. Instead, they use him to avoid the traps but Jax has his lackeys make it almost impossible to navigate the cubes from here on out. Eric tries to remember his calculations of which rooms are traps, but Jax changes the trap configuration so they are completely surrounded by traps. Soon, Jax gets a call from the higher-ups, and they tell him to just finish it and stop toying with the subjects. They release an electrical current in the cube that traps them inside, but the connection fails for some reason. Jax questions Don to see if he knows who might be interrupting their connection, but he swears that he has no idea. Soon, we see that Dodd has ripped some of the wires out of the system. After Dodd excuses himself from the room, the entire cube goes into a reset mode, and Eric knows that they have 10 minutes before the cube completely resets. That means the cube will incinerate anything inside so that it gets rid of all living material. Eric realizes that their best bet is to head to square one to make it out alive. Back in the offices, Jack sees the wires and realizes exactly what Dot has done. He goes to find him, and Dot is caught ripping more power systems out. He cuts away at Dot before going back to the main room where he tells his lackeys to hack into the implant that is inside Haskell. After dropping Haskell into a cube, they take control of his body and send him after Reigns and Eric who think he died. With his new and improved abilities that come from the chip, Haskell leaps into the cube that the others are in and starts to strangle Reigns. Eric fights back, but he's no match for him. Finally, Reigns hits him where it hurts, and they take him down. They continue through the cubes until they get to a cube that will take them to the perimeter. Once it is time for the reset, they find themselves over water, and Eric assumes that this is the third exit that he has heard about. Suddenly, Haskell drops down on them. Ultimately, they end him and jump into the water just as the cubes eliminate all living material. Back in the office, Jack's lackeys think they've succeeded, but that isn't so sure. He has them send a squad to the exit point. As Eric and Reigns emerge and run through the woods, men try to shoot them with rifles. Eventually, Eric is shot, but Reigns continues through the woods. Later, Eric wakes up to see Jax read a note that says he has been sentenced to two lifetimes in his current position since he's been found guilty of treason. He finds out that he signed up to be a subject a very long time ago, and he has been serving his time this whole time. As a consolation prize, Eric finds out that they didn't find Reigns, and that's enough for him in the end. As the doctor cuts into his brain to implant a chip, all of his memories flood onto the screen. Then we see Reigns hiding in the forest with her daughter, and she explains that Eric was a hero. Suddenly, Eric finds himself in the cube, 
but now he is having issues mentally that remind us of a familiar subject. Cube Zero is an interesting prequel to the original Cube, and it even ties it together in the end. While it might focus more on a gory action style of shooting, it's still a terrifying concept to think about. If you've enjoyed this recap, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.